Hello, my name is Crystal Rodriguez. I'm in AMP 1505. Uh, my portion of the homework was, um, was in Chapter 2, Chemical Basis of Life, 2.2 Structure of Matter. Now I was told to describe how the atomic structure determines how atoms interact. An atom consists of central portions called the nucleus and one or more electrons that consistently move around the nucleus. The number of electrons in an outermost shell of an atom determines whether an atom will react with another atom. When atoms form links called bonds, they gain, lose, or share electrons. Electrons occupy space in the areas called electron shells that encircle the atomic nucleus. Atoms with filled outer shells are inert, whereas atoms with incompletely filled outer shells gain, lose, or share electrons and thus become stable. Atoms that lose electrons become positively charged, also known as cations, and atoms that gain electrons become negatively charged, also known as anions. Ions with opposite charges attract and join by ionic bonds. Atoms that share electrons join by covalent bonds. A structural formula represents the arrangement of an atom in a molecule. Polar molecules result from unequal sharing of electrons. Hydrogen bonds may form between polar molecules. For example, water, also known as H2O. H2O is a compound consisting of two hydrogen atoms bonded to oxygen atom. The atoms within a compound can be held together by a variety of interactions ranging from covalent bonds to electrostatic forces and ionic bonds. A continuum of bond polarities consists between the purely covalent bond and ionic bonds. H2O is held together by a polar covalent bond. And there you go. That is my portion of the homework. Again, my name is Crystal Rodriguez, AP 1505. Um, I did use, besides our book, I did use um, another website, which is sciencedaily.com. I went under the chemical compound, compound section, and I did get some of my references here. Mainly my example was from here. Uh, and that is it. I do hope it was informative um, and thank you. Have a great day.